I flew into Mount on a twin prop Air Botswana plane. From above, you can see just how arid the Kalahari landscape surrounding the Okavango Delta is. At ground level, you can stock up on all your camping amenities in Mount. There's even a Woolworths. If you need to spend the night, you can't go wrong with Audi Camp. It's eight kilometers east of Mount, and the hamburgers in the restaurant are delicious. The next morning, I woke up early and tackled the 375 kilometers to Shakawe at the far north of the Panhandle, almost on the Namibian border. The tar road is in excellent condition, but watch out for donkeys and goats. Shakawe is nowhere near as big as Maun. This is the local Shell service station. That night I pitched my tent to Chakawe Fishing Lodge, right on the river. I ticked off a Pell's fishing owl before bed and fell asleep to hippos snorting. Today I planned to drive to Saronga, on the other side of the river. To get there you need to catch the Mahembo ferry, about 10 kilometers north of Shakawe. I didn't know what to expect, but the ferry was efficient, and best of all, it was free. I was also a bit worried about the 100 kilometer dirt road to Saronga. I'd heard all sorts of horror stories, but it was plain sailing all the way, and the drive took just over an hour. My destination in Saronga was Mvuvu Camp, a rustic bush camp on an island. So I parked my car under a tree next to the river, and the staff came to fetch me in an aluminium motorboat. I moved into a safari tent under a marula tree, and went on a lazy afternoon walk around the island. At sunrise the next morning, bush guide Lovemo Sechejo took me out on a mokoro, a flat-bottomed canoe. Although mokoros are traditionally hollowed out of a tree trunk, the new ones are made of fiberglass and, according to Lovemo, much more stable and watertight. It's thrilling to glide over the crystal-clear, tea-colored water with the Okavango Delta stretching out to the horizon in all directions. And even more thrilling to almost bump into a hippo and spot some elephants on the bank. The frogs and lilies won the consolation prizes for added beauty. After some crackers and cheese for lunch, I stretched out my legs and let the afternoon slide by. The next morning, I reluctantly said goodbye to Umvuvu camp and crossed the ferry again. Today, my mission was to get to Sodilo Hills. The 40-kilometer dirt road to Sodilo was also in great shape. There are more than 5,000 rock paintings at Sodilo Hills and evidence of human habitation dating back thousands and thousands of years. Lawrence van der Post likened the hills to a great and ancient temple, and I agree. It's an extremely spiritual place with a very edgy atmosphere. My camp companions at Sodilo were a herd of cows and two hungry dogs who scored a salami snack when I packed up the next morning. Guma Lagoon Camp is at the bottom of the Panhandle, almost directly across the river from Saronga. As you can see, the road is, well, there's not much of a road. I left my car in a village called Etcher 13, and Mpo came to collect me in the camp's Land Rover. The bad road is worth it. Guma Lagoon Camp is a great place to stay. There are two of these new safari tents, and they are very reasonably priced. There's also a wonderful campsite. It was quite a relief not to have to set up my own tent, though. The camp is right on the lagoon, and there's a fantastic deck over the water. The main activity at Guma Lagoon is fishing, but June isn't the best time. I went out with Mark de Yaga, the camp manager, and we managed to catch a baby Nembwe, or olive bream, and a really tiny tigerfish. I spent my last night at Guma Island Lodge, also on the lagoon, and then caught a lift back to my car at Etcher 13. The road back from Island Lodge is a bit better than the one to Guma Lagoon Camp, but the wet bits are still very wet. After a week in the delta, the prospect of rejoining the real world was a daunting one. But as we trundled along behind these donkeys, I was already making plans to come back.